Happy Pride Month, boss babes. It's June and that means it's illegal to be straight. Anyway, in honor of Pride Month and recently hitting 10,000 subscribers, thank you guys so, so much. I put out a poll for you guys to vote on and everyone wanted to hear my coming out story. So that's what I'm sharing today and why it took me until I was 21 years old to come out of the closet. The main reason I'm sharing this though is to hopefully help someone. It's so scary to be in a homophobic environment or even coming to terms with yourself can be terrifying. Something that really helped me was watching other people's coming out stories. They really helped to inspire me to want to come out as well. If I can be that person to anybody else in the world watching this video, then that would make me extremely happy. So let's get into it now, shall we? Woo! I grew up in a Christian, conservative, very right-wing household in a small town of 6,000 people in Heber Springs, Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah, if you're guessing that my experience growing up in a small town smack dab in the middle of the Bible Belt was not great, then you're completely correct. Yes, you are the winner of the video today. <laughs> yeah, it was a challenge to say the least. There was a lot of beauty to that small town though, but with that came a lot of pain, trauma, and self-loathing that I had to experience and overcome to become the person I am today. Growing up in that environment, I learned very quickly that being gay was a really bad thing. My dad would have Fox News on constantly. And there were times, <laughs> there were multiple times where he would be like literally bouncing around the living room, like giddy with excitement, imagining the day that the San Andreas Fault would go off and California would slide into the ocean, taking all the F slurs with it. And then that's what they deserve for defying God's will. So there's a lot to unpack there. We're, we're just going to move on. I'm just going to, I'm just going to preface that as my situation growing up. Um, a lot came from that, you know, the pain, trauma and self-loathing I happily mentioned earlier. There's also a little bit of a deeper level to it. Um, uh, that included self-harm. That was very fun, um, which I can go pretty into detail. If you guys are interested in hearing that, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to share. But for now, we're here for gay shit. So let's get back to that and where it all started. Here's me when I was really small and battling my way through the fallopian. Well, um, hold on. Actually, that might be a little too early. Let's let's fast forward a little here. It all started when I was born. <laughs> okay. As a small child, like four to six years old, rocking these epic sunglasses and the blonde bowl cut. Yeah, my hair went through a transformation as well. It started out blonde and then turned brunette. So that's kind of fun fact about me. Anyway, when I was around that age, there would occasionally just be like a man that would catch my eye, mainly dads, you know, like thick dads, like beefy, <clears throat> <laughs> like beefy dads I just stared at them and I never understood it I felt so different like looking at these men than I did like anybody else and I just kind of eventually settled on wow you know sometimes I really like looking at a guy <laughs> just really like staring at him and I didn't think much into it well because I was a really small child and I, I just didn't know what was going on and hadn't figured out that I was attracted to adult men yet or understood what these feelings were at all. Growing up, I just thought I was normal and straight like everybody else because I never like felt attracted to boys my age. I had like a girlfriend in kindergarten, but it was just like, I would drive around in her Barbie pink Jeep Power Wheels, which, you know, maybe that's not the most straight thing ever. Anyway, after that, relationship ended <laughs> in kindergarten. Um, fourth grade, I was like, I don't want a girlfriend because I don't want to have to buy her things. I thought having a girlfriend meant you just had to buy them stuff and I didn't want to do that. For the most part, growing up through elementary school and entering middle school, I thought I was straight. I felt like I was straight. I identified as straight the whole nine yards until I was 12. And that's when the Fire Nation attacked. It was prime time 2006, 2007 era, and the internet was my favorite thing ever. Watching YouTube and playing RuneScape, 
basically still the best things to do on the internet today, I was doing them then. It also didn't take me very long to realize that it was pretty easy to see people doing things naked on the internet. And upon initially discovering that content when I was like halfway through being 11 years old, I was excited by it. It was like, whoa, I felt attracted to women, you know? Like, whoa, it was crazy to see a human being naked. That was like, then about a year or so later, I had been noticing that, this, that that feeling was kind of only really happening when there was a man in the image. So, so that led me to one, so that led me to, uh, to one day to Google something totally different. I Googled the word penis. That's it. That's all I typed. That image of the Google search bar <laughs> with the word penis in it is forever burned into my mind because I have been told my whole life that this was wrong. That what I was doing right now, searching for things with this word in it was very incorrect. And that gay people were abominations and were doomed to burn in hell, which is just completely inaccurate and was purposefully mistranslated by an American publishing company in 1942 to propagate heteronormativity. And the correct translation is that man should not lie with little boys. It's literally condemning pedophilia. Back to my Google search moment. There was a lot of adrenaline in doing something that I was told was wrong, but I felt differently about it. It didn't feel wrong to me. When I clicked the first result of that search, I was just blown away. It was unlike anything I had experienced so far. The content with only men was just like, whoa, whoa. Okay, uh, that is so much better than the content I saw with men and women or women and women. Uh, I tried that for a moment. <laughs> Immediately after that search, I literally felt like I was slammed against a wall and confronted with this question of, wait, does this mean I'm gay? Like I almost couldn't even think the word gay. I sat with that thought for about less than a second before immediately shutting it down. Nope, not gay. Not gay at all. I can't be gay. I cannot be gay. I cannot be the gay sibling. I was scared. I, I was quite literally quaking in my boots, even though I, I didn't have shoes on. There's, there's no way that can happen. And I, I moved on. Shell shocked. I, I, pretended it didn't happen. Well, I tried. It wasn't long before I felt that urge again. And every time I felt so ashamed of myself. I couldn't believe I was doing this. I, I'm not a bad person, I'm not a bad kid. Why do I have to be plagued by this, I would think. I would think I was normal before. Like what happened here? And I wish I could go back. I, I tried to go back, I kept pushing it away and told no one. I suffered in silence for years. Oh my God, actually like kind of a long time, like nine years. Yeah, nine years. I forced myself to watch straight adult content. I thought that would fix it. It never did. I prayed and prayed and prayed and cried and cried while I was praying to make this go away. I didn't understand why I was like this, why this was happening to me. I was scared. I was so scared of what my family would think. I was so scared of what my friends at school would think or all the other kids or what they would do to me or what they might do to me or, or what my dad might do to me. It just, it just, there was no reality in my mind where I could be gay. So I dove deep into church. I joined the Wednesday night youth group in middle school, went on youth group trips, eventually joined the youth group choir, and even did like a Sunday evening, like boys group thing at the church. I thought that would give me my answer because I was told that this book had all the answers in life for it. And I guess I just hadn't found out this one yet. Then there was one day at youth group 
where we were shown this video of other teenagers going through real life hard stuff, such as living in poverty, struggling with self-esteem, dealing with physically abusive parents even. And in the mix, there was one kid who was struggling with homosexuality. The way the video was structured, it would jump between each kid's story, kind of like piecing them all together. And every time that boy came on the screen, I was just like 100% focused on him. Every fiber of my being was like, I have to know what this kid's gonna say. This, this is it. This is where I'm gonna find my answer. Like there's, there's gonna be a solution here because every single storyline resolved with some really good advice. When it got to his conclusion, there was essentially nothing. He just said he prays a lot and like puts his faith first or some other bullshit. And there was nothing, there was nothing for me from that. I was devastated. I, I thought I was finally getting my answer. I was hoping he'd say something like he prayed a lot and became straight again, finally. Thank Jesus or that it's actually okay to be Christian and gay, or that's even possible to be Christian and gay because the only thing that I knew was that if you're gay, then you're burning in hell and I would be separated from my family and my friends who are in heaven for all of eternity over something I have no control over. I left that evening thinking it was hopeless, that I had no other option. I just had to keep trying to be straight <laughs> at all costs and maybe eventually it'll work. I remember thinking in middle school that I would have it all figured out by the time I was a freshman in high school. I would have a girlfriend and life would make sense. Freshman year rolls around and the coaches are hot. Literally mass destruction in my mind is happening at this moment. Freshman year, I had one coach as a teacher and he was like distractingly hot. Hard to pay attention in class hot. So I told myself, okay, we're just gonna roll with this. Um, but by senior year of high school, we're gonna have a girlfriend. That's how it's gonna be. And things will be okay. Everything will be great then. <gasps> well, later in my sophomore year, whenever I had junior year, whenever I had Spanish one, I had another coach for a teacher. And remember how hot I thought that first coach was? Well, let me tell you, this one was a whole nother level. He was so incredibly attractive. Jealous of his wife level of attractiveness. I would sit there in class and be like, oh my God, she is so lucky. All this time I'm drooling over the coaches, I'm still telling myself I need to get a girlfriend. Telling myself that's what I want. Well, really lying to myself that's what I want. Because I, I mean, I still felt like I had no other option. This just could not happen. That created a lot of weird moments of like texting girls, just conversationally, but me thinking I'm flirting and they're flirting just because we're, we're talking, because I, I, I didn't know anything else. I didn't know you're supposed to feel like a, a very crazy way towards a person, uh, you know, to like date them and stuff because I didn't have anyone my age that I felt that way about. I'd eventually tell them I have a crush on them, which in reality I, I didn't. I was just trying to like play a part, play this role. And it was all just so awkward. So incredibly awkward. Uh, outside of that, I was really good at hiding it from my friends. I had them all convinced. There was more than one occasion where a friend would use my phone and you know what that means. <laughs> uh, anytime a friend asked me to use, my, to use my phone for something, I was like sweating bullets on the inside, trying not to die. There were times where they would see a recent search history pop up and ask me like, what is this? Like, and I just had to play dumb or shocked or angry. Like sometimes like turn it on them for like searching that on my phone. I was like, dude, why would you search that on my phone? What the heck, man? That's like, that's so messed up. Like, why would you do that to me? And then they'd be like, oh, I, I didn't, I swear. And then I would be like, oh, it was probably the person before you who used my phone that searched it. I was like, oh, I'm like, I can't believe that person would do that. I'm definitely gonna get him back for that. I did that so I could fly under the radar or well, <laughs> the gaydar, I should say. Let's jump to college now because that's also kind of an even stranger time. <laughs> going into college, my strategy was that I would find out my answer. Going into college, my strategy was that I would figure things out by trying it with a girl first. 
Because then, you know, if I'm like super into it, then okay, I'm fine, I'm straight. But if I'm not, then I'm like, okay, I like have my answer. Because I mean, how can I say I'm gay if I haven't experienced anything? I'm literally just trying to force any sort of bent logic in my mind to try to feel like I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's a mess. Which that thinking is completely wrong. You can absolutely declare your any sort of sexual orientation without having to have any experience with it because you just feel it, you know? Like if you're attracted to a certain sex, then it's like bada bing, bada boom, there you go. And if anyone's watching this that's like offended by other people's sexuality, um, then do I have some news for you? But anyway, we'll move on because we're talking about me, not you. This was just my weird strategy for just, just, I don't know, trying to stay sane and alive in the state of denial that I was in at the time. And even though that was my plan, I didn't really put much focus on dating in college because, well, I was just trying to exist as a human being and survive each day, it felt like. But in the spring semester, of my second year in college, my sophomore year, I tried rushing a fraternity, which is just crazy because that is not who I am at all. It's just, it's just funny to think back that I even like tried that. Though through rushing, I met two of my absolute best friends and am extremely thankful for them. Uh, on top of that, I also, I did meet a girl. I met a girl. She was cool and into me. So we ended up going on a date. I took her to go see the SpongeBob movie and then we ate Panda Express after. I think I should write a blog about first date ideas. I think that would do really well. We had our first date. It was cute and fun. We like made out, but it just, it just felt strange to me. It just, there wasn't like any sort of spark. It was just kind of like lips on lips and it was just odd. So you know what I did? I kept trying. <laughs> we hung out again and ended up fooling around. And the whole time I pretended she was a guy. And afterwards that scared me a lot. I was so scared and ashamed of it that I ghosted her. I just completely ghosted her. I'm sorry. I know it's, it's awful because I, I ghosted her because I, I felt like I couldn't, I, I couldn't give a reason. I just, cause I couldn't. I couldn't even like still think that in my mind that I was gay. So I just ghosted her, no explanation, not proud of that. Shortly after that, I dropped out of my pledge ship for my fraternity because like literally what the heck was that? We had to literally like be at the house, like kind of at all times. My whole life was being ruled by it. All of my free time like kind of had to be spent there and getting heckled while mopping the floor was just like, Wow, I literally cannot believe people pay money and a lot of money for this experience. So I dropped out thankfully and got my life back to myself. And that's when I started therapy, which I think is the best decision I've ever made for myself. I spent a solid year just working on <laughs> dealing with my childhood trauma without even like thinking about telling anyone about being gay or my struggles dating women. None of that was even there yet. I worked through a lot of stuff. I kind of got to the point where that was like the main thing bubbling up to the top there. So things weren't working out being straight. That bubble was fully at the top now. And there was one day when I was driving home from campus and I stopped at this really large intersection, like kind of absurdly large intersection. <laughs> near my apartment and it just kind of hit me. I was like, okay, it's not been working. I've been trying to be straight since I was 12. We are 20 years old now, I think, 19 or 20. I think I, think I just turned 20 actually. And I decided, okay, we're just gonna work on feeling okay about this. We're just gonna work on accepting it. Let's embrace this. I went home and the first thing I did was I downloaded Grindr, had a no picture profile and began chatting with guys. Oh, dude, that was such a strange feeling. So it was just like excitement that I was finally doing it, but then also like so much fear and anxiety. I was very timid and cautious on the app. And then I eventually decided to see an off-campus therapist with the whole goal of, of working on accepting myself. And it took me a few sessions to even get to where I told her why I truly like 
went to go talk to her. And that was to discuss my struggles dating women. Because I like wanted to say I was gay, but I was still like scared to. So I brought that up to her that I want to talk about my struggles dating women. And she just kind of, you know, like calmly looks back at me right in the eyes and says, well, why do you think that? And I took a deep breath and I paused and I imagined myself saying, I'm gay. And just imagining that coming out of my mouth scared me. I, uh, and I didn't do it. I just said, I'm not sure. And I had brought this up at the end of the session, near the end of the session. I pretty much just left after that. But before leaving, my therapist was like, Alex, you know, you can tell me anything. I was like, okay. And I left and I thought about it for a week. <laughs> I come back from my next session. Uh, I was like, okay, let's talk about my, my struggles dating women. And she's just like, all right, let's do it. Why do you think that's a thing? And I replied, well, I'm gay and I don't know what to do about it. It just felt like the air was crackling with like static, with like lightning almost. <laughs> it was like, Holy shit, I can't believe I just said that. And my therapist was just extremely, you know, calm and amazing because that's what their therapists do. It, she was just like, okay, great. Let's work on that. I'm so glad you just got right to the point here and that we didn't have to like go through like a whole bunch of questions and really try to dig it out. You were just straight up with it. And I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Let's do it. <laughs> and we began working on it. Digging through all that good internalized homophobia from childhood. Ha, huh, very fun stuff. I had started seeing her in the spring of my third year of school, so my junior year. It wasn't until September that I finally told someone else and I told my older sister, Becky. So I called her and I was like beating around the bush. I was like, hey, Becky, how's it going? And she was like, hey, I'm good. What you? What you calling about? What you want to chat about? And I'm just like, um, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> just want to talk to you. Right when she's kind of like about to hang up the call because we were just not really talking about anything. Before she began to like say goodbye, I just blurted out. I was like, well, okay, hold on. I've actually, I've got something I want to talk to you about, but I'm really scared to talk about it. And she's just like, oh, okay, well, what is it? And I'm like, uh, uh actually, I don't know if I'm ready to talk about it. And she's just like, okay. That's and then I'm like, ah, but I want to talk about it. And she's like, okay, um, just Alex, just, just rip the bandaid off. It'll be fine. Just do it. So I, I sat there and before I could even think about imagining myself saying the words, I just said it. I just said, I'm gay. And it felt like the world was imploding. My chest had just like collapsed inside my body. I felt awful. I started crying. My sister was like reassuring me that she had gay friends growing up and it's totally fine. She understands and and referenced a Jurassic Park quote where Chris Pratt is explaining the two female velociraptors had like a baby and they're like, how the heck did that happen? And he's like, life finds a way. And that made me laugh a little bit and feel a little more comfortable, I, I guess. But as soon as I hung up the phone, I felt awful again. I didn't feel that like wave of relief that people talked about after they first told someone. I, I still felt incredibly mixed up and I was like, oh God, I, I can't believe I just did that. What if that was a mistake? Even though my sister was really reassuring, I, I, I still just didn't feel safe myself, I guess. And so I talked to my therapist about it. We worked on it some more. I got to where I was feeling a little better, kind of. <laughs> then eventually I was like, okay, I want to tell more people. The night I tell my next person, it was the 2016 election. Uh, Donald Trump had just been announced as the president of the United States. I was at my buddy's house and I just like stepped outside to go out on the balcony and like get away from that. Um, and I called my best friend from childhood, my like literal brother, but not like blood brother. We're, we're basically brothers, we we're such good friends. My friend Ashton, and I called him and I was like, hey dude, I've got something to tell you. And he's like, yeah, what's up? I was like, well, I'm gay. And he's like, oh man, thank you for finally telling me. I'm like, wait, finally telling me? What do you mean? How'd you know? And he's like, well, there was one time when you came over to hang out at the house and I used your laptop to Google something and I saw a recent search result pop up and I was like, oh, and, Ash and Ashton thought, oh, okay, Alex is gay. That's cool. And literally like didn't think anything else of it. Huge, amazing friend. He never even talked to me about it. Like he waited all this time for me to bring it up to him. And that just really shows like how much of an amazing person he is. 
And we actually had a really good conversation. I felt better, finally. I, I finally felt a little better about all of this, that like Ashton provided me that comfort. And so that was like a, a really good positive like experience. So I left my buddy's place that night. And I was like, hey, I'm gonna go home, go back to my place. So I went back to my apartment and this is, this is senior year of college now, my fourth year of college. Go back to my place and in my friend group chat of all my friends that I grew up really close with as well, was just kind of like going off arguing about the election results. And so I decided to hop in the shower while that's all going on. And just in the middle of everything happening, I was like, guys, I've got something I really want to tell you, but I'm absolutely terrified to tell you. And they're all like, yo, what's up, Alex? Like everyone kind of like quit arguing. And I was like, well, I'm gay. And they were surprised, which kind of surprised me. Cause I was like, what the heck? I was so close with you guys. I know I hit it extremely well, but I also thought that like, Maybe someone might have wondered since I literally like never had a girlfriend was never really seen with girls around them or ever really talked about girls So I just thought, you know, maybe somebody would would wonder but no, apparently not um, Everyone was like pretty well surprised and then soon we were cracking jokes and it was hilarious and uh, I was crying in the shower like so much and I felt good. I finally like felt that wave of relief that all this like weird, emotional, twisted, twisted yuckiness was finally settling. For the first time, I really kind of like felt good about myself. So that was great. It only made me want to tell more people. My next step from that point was telling my college friend group, you know, the, the friends that I'm around day by day in person, kind of easier to tell all these people who I don't interact with on a daily basis, you know, like physically. So I started off with, like my closest friend at the time from the friend group, um, John, I told him and he was like really amazing about it. He was actually even excited about it, which I thought was pretty funny. He was like excited for like, oh, that's such a cool friend group dynamic to have like a gay guy in our friend group just cause it's different. And, and John's that kind of person. He's just a really cool dude. He was telling me, he's like, Alex, I think this is gonna be amazing actually. I think everyone's gonna love it and we're all gonna have a really good time. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So shortly after I told John, I shot a text out to my college friend group and I said, hey guys, I've got something really gay to tell you actually. And they're all like, oh, well, what? <laughs> and I just said, it's me. <laughs> they're like a little confused. I'm like, I'm gay. This is literally me coming out to you <laughs> right now. And they're like, oh, oh my God, okay, awesome. And they were so supportive and it really just made me feel so loved. And I felt so freaking good at that point too. I was like, okay, wow. Another good experience, here we go. I was building some confidence. So I just slowly told more and more of my friends from college. And then I graduated school and I went to Ohio for the 2017 summer to go work at Cedar Point, which was amazing. It was a ton of work and super exhausting, but it was so much fun at the same time. I loved all the people there. It was a really great opportunity for me to kind of like leave all that behind and, and start fresh and be a little more like forward with my sexuality and saying that like, hey, yep, I'm gay, that's cool. Here I am, that's me. I even came out to my mom at this time. I waited until I was all the way across the nation, a 13 hour drive away before I gave her that phone call, told her that I was gay. And her response was, well, I bet that feels really good to get off your chest. And I was like, kind of shocked because, I mean, my mom's always been cool. I've, I've always loved my mom and still do love my mom and everything. I, I was just like s still scared though because I'd grown up in such like a homophobic, like freaking household, but that was mostly kind of led by my dad, I suppose. And it, it felt good. And I asked her, I was like, does this change your opinion of me at all? And she says, she immediately said, no, I still think you're a really great person. So that felt amazing. I was super excited about that. The thing was with when I told my mom was she was just also like, okay, we're also not going to tell dad. And so I went on to have a really great summer in Ohio. I had my first boyfriend short term relationship moment there. Sam, he was really awesome. Miss you, Sam. And all the friends from Cedar Point, the Starbucks squad. After Cedar Point, I came back to Arkansas and I actually shared my coming out story on YouTube. <laughs> and I knew there was a chance dad could see this video, but I know he only uses Facebook and I thought, okay, as long as I don't share it on Facebook, then it'll be totally fine. So I shared it on YouTube and Instagram and like one of my cousins saw it and like sent it around to like my mom's side of the family and they're all cool. Like they're all allies and supportive and cool people. And my mom ended up like 
telling my dad about it because she just didn't think it was fair that everyone else knew and all that stuff and whatnot. And I was like, okay, I mean, it's probably gonna happen eventually. And while this was going on, I was currently working in Arkansas. I was working at JB Hunt and my mom texted me that she wanted to like talk with me later that day. And I was like, hey, I also wanna talk with you too because it was that exact day that I had texted my sister who lives here in Phoenix before I walked into work and told her, hey, I wanna move out of Arkansas. Do you have any connections out West? And she replied with, dude, just come live with me. I'm like, okay, absolutely. And we had just decided on a day that I was gonna move out to Phoenix. I, I made a meeting with my manager and told her my last day at JB Hunt and I was moving to Phoenix. And it was crazy that my mom had texted me that because I also wanted to tell her something too. And that was that I was moving to Phoenix. After work, I call her and I'm like, okay, you guys go first because mine's really exciting and fun. I wanna save it for last. And she's just like, well, okay. Um, you know, we love you, but we don't support your lifestyle choices. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? It was weird because I was like, I already like told you this a year ago. Like, why is this now coming up? And then it dawned on me, oh, dad found the video and mom must be on damage control right now. So, so I just kind of like went along. I was like, okay, thank you. I'm glad you still love me, I guess. And then I was like, okay, well, time for my news. I'm moving to Phoenix. And then on my drive home, my car's alternator went out, completely died. Uh, I had to tow it to Rogers, a nearby town where my brother lived, and I had a friend drive me up to my brother's house, and then me and my brother bought a new alternator, and we replaced my car's alternator that went out the day after work. So that was just like a crazy, crazy whirlwind, like universe experience that was like, okay, moving to Phoenix is the right move. This is, this is perfect. But with all this going on, this means I am like making the right choice to move to Phoenix. And now I'm here in Phoenix, living an amazing life. I've got an incredible and very handsome boyfriend and life is pretty darn good. The YouTube channel's vibing. Pretty much the only thing now is that I just wanna do YouTube full time and own a Tesla. <laughs> Those are my two big goals for now. Um, but that's my story, you guys. I wanna end it on like, just keep going. Like if you're in a situation where you can't express yourself, where it may even be hostile for you to express yourself, just, just wait, you can get through it, I promise. And when you're an adult, you're independent, you can fully express yourself, you can work this all out in therapy and you will be okay, I promise. If there's anyone that maybe you can trust that's your age, that you can talk to, or maybe another trusted adult, a school counselor, definitely go that route. And also, once you come out, you never stop coming out. You'll be coming out for the rest of your life. And it gets easier, it really does. And if any of you are out there struggling with your sexuality or coming to terms with who you are, I hope that I was able to provide you some insight, some reassurance and some comfort through my story here and how things have worked out well for me because honey, we are vibing right now. We are living our best girl boss life at the moment and it's only gonna get better. So just keep on going. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like, comment down below if this did help you, if you have any thoughts or feelings on the subject, I would love to listen to them, read them, respond, and maybe help offer you some further comfort. That's the end of this video. If you'd like to watch some more of my content, here's some videos on the screen now. Click one of these to continue watching and I'll see you there. Bye.